Welcome everybody. My name is Monika Wismann and I'm from the ViaVis Research Center in Vienna. I'm excited today to show you how you can implement an interactive visualization in a clean code base thanks to the help of the ELM architecture and also how to boost the performance. So the nice thing about interactive visualization is that the user has the ability to adapt the display data and the output to their needs. But also one challenge that comes with interactivity is that this interactivity has to be immediately seen in the display data. So what this means is that we need a really good performance. But to achieve a better performance often means that you need low level optimization, which is usually rather hard to achieve and often also messes with your code base. Therefore, we want to show you how you can implement your code in a nice, clean way and also boost your performance without changing much of this code. So to show you our result, we first need a use case. So we thought about the design first. For our use case, we wanted an example that everybody is familiar with. Let's take a look here. So on the left side, we have a book bestsellers list. One on the right side, we have a smartphone ranking. So both are really similar. They show similar items that got ordered by an overall score. But what is the difference between those two? Well, in the book bestsellers list, the books are ordered by the amount of copies sold. So it is much more simpler than the smartphone ranking, which has a score that consists of multiple attributes. So a multiple attribute ranking seemed already not like a nice idea for our use case, but there is not that much interactivity in it for now. And we know the nice thing about interactivity is that the users may adapt the outcome of the data to their needs. So maybe they're a user that don't really care much about the camera of their phone because they hardly take any pictures with it. But maybe the battery life is a much more important issue for them. So what we thought of is to add some kind of weighting for our attributes that also get displayed in the score. Now that we have some kind of idea in mind, let's take a look what kind of information is really important for us and what kind of interactivity should be possible. So this is how our implementation looks like. What we see here is basically a ranking view showing us data about photo cameras and each camera has attributes like, for example, a dimension, a maximal resolution or the price. So let's just go quickly over it and take a look what kind of information we see here. And we have three different kind of columns. So the first column gives us some simple information like the name of the camera model. The second kind of column shows us a numerical attribute. So those are the attributes that get actually cal calculated into our score. And what we see here is the absolute number and also the relative number in percent. And to visualize this, we also added a bar which shows the percentage. Last but not least, we have our scores. This is maybe the most important and most interesting column. So what we see here is the overall score in percentage and this is represented by a stacked bar. And the stacked bar shows us the contribution of each attribute to the overall score. For additional information, we added a histogram above the header which shows the distribution of each attribute. The overview of our information, let's take a look about the possibilities of interactivity. So on top we have our header and by clicking on the name of the attribute we have the possibility to sort it in an ascending or descending order. One exciting way of interaction with our ranking view is by changing the weights of the different attributes. We have basically two possibilities for that. So on the upper part, we can change the weights directly by the input field or a much more interesting way to interact with it is by the bar that we see on the bottom. Um, we can click on the reddish rectangles and drag the bar to the left or the right to change the weightings. Uh, we will see this shortly in a small demonstration in a video. 
Of course, we also have the possibility to filter out attributes completely. So by clicking on one of the red buttons, the corresponding attribute get filtered out of the ranking view. And by clicking on a green button, it get added in again. So filtered out uh, attributes, of course, has have no effect on our overall score. Now that we saw how our user interface works, let's get a bit more technical. Our underlying architecture is the Elm architecture. The Elm architecture is basically a variant of the well-known model view controller architecture, and it makes uh, use of reactive programming paradigms, which is well suited for interactive apps. So what we have is basically an immutable model, which holds our data. So a simple implementation for our model could look something like this. Here we have a model holding a single attribute called value, which is an integer. So our model gets represented by the view, which holds basically HTML code. So our example view here holds a div, which includes three different elements. So two of those elements is a text and the second text is holding our model value. And we also have a button. The button enables the user to interact with our view. And by clicking on it, the user triggers an action. The message encodes the type of our action. So by the kind of our message, the update function knows how to update our model accordingly. So in our example, the model's value gets increased by one. So now we have a new model. It gets again visualized by the view so that the user can see the changes. So one thing to keep in mind is that the really nice thing about the Elm architecture is the unidirectional data flow, which uh, keeps our structure and code really clean. And in contrast to traditional approaches, this is all purely functional and immutable, which avoids problems like, for example, side effects. Another nice feature of the Elm architecture is scaling through composition. What this basically means is that bigger apps are composed out of smaller apps by using function composition. So this is a really nice way to reuse our code. For our concrete implementation, we used Artwork. Artwork is a great open source platform for visual computation, real-time graphics and visualization. It also has some nice features like incremental computation primitives. Um, Artwork consists of multiple components. So Artwork's component that we actually use for our implementation is Artwork Media. Artwork Media is a server-side functional front-end and UI, and it is based on the Elm architecture that I just showed you. Its concrete implementation language is F-sharp. F-sharp is basically the functional sibling of C-sharp. So it has all the nice features that functional languages have, like immutability to avoid side effects, concise code, easy testability, and so on. And Artwork Media has also some nice optimization mechanisms that run in the background. Now that we know how it was implemented, let's take a look on our first implementation of our ranking view. So what we see is basically we try to pull the slider left and right to change the weighting, but it looks pretty laggy, right? Well, What's the problem with this? Why is it so slow? Let's take a look on the example of a view that I showed you earlier explaining the Elm architecture. What happens in our current implementation is every time the user interacts with the interface and changes the model, the whole view has to be re-rendered and recalculated. But is this really needed? No, not really. When we look on the code, the only field that really is affected by the changes is this text field. So this is where um, incremental rendering comes from the rescue. Incremental rendering means basically this. I just update the structures that depend on my changes. But how should we achieve this? This sounds quite tricky to do, right? Well, actually it is not. Remember when I told you that Artwork provides implementation for incremental structures. 
So, in our example, the only thing we basically have to do is to change our text to an incremental text. And now, every time our model value changes, the view knows that only this field has to be updated and the rest can stay the same. So by this, we avoid a lot of calculation overhead. And the nice thing about artwork is that it not only provides this for simple fields like text, but also for data structures like lists and maps. Those are those, uh, the structures that are mostly used for the implementation of my ranking view. If you want to know more details about the background of the incremental rendering, um, please take a look on my paper. So, what we basically achieved is that we have only small changes on our code, which helps us to make it much more performance. Let's check out our implementation now that we added the incremental data structures for the lists and maps in our view. Now we again try to drag the waiting bar and we see that the movements now are much smoother than before, right? I think this is pretty impressive. We just changed a little bit of code and gained a lot of performance. Of course, we measured the performance. So we automated the user interaction with the waiting bar and measured the uptime. So with the incremental data structures, we saw that our performance improved by a factor of five. So I think this is pretty impressive. Let's conclude. So I showed you a case study, how you can implement a user interface that is capable of handling a big amount of data in a quite smooth and performant way. We did this by implementing the code in the Elm architecture, which gives us a really nice code base. And by the artwork platform, we didn't have to change much in it to achieve a better performance, which is usually a rather tricky thing to achieve. And because of the Elm architecture, we also have our reusable UI parts, which we can scale by composition to even bigger apps. And of course, we have the pros of functional programming paradigms, like for example, immutable data structures to avoid side effects and concise code. And the code is additionally nicely testable. I hope I could give you some insights about interactive visualization or the Elm architecture. And to thank you for your attention, here I have a picture of a cute artwork family. And if you want to know more about our work, please visit us on vrvis.at. Or if you're interested in the artwork platform, visit advarkians.com. Thank you very much.